It's funny, Psalms isn't in the center of this Bible. Usually you're supposed to open it to the center and there Psalms is. Too many notes in the Bible. Psalm 37, 23. <clears throat> it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this nation. Lord, I thank you for the years and years that we have enjoyed peace. Relatives' peace in our streets, in our homes. In our churches, in our land. And Father, on this July 4th anniversary, we find our nation almost completely upside down. And it is no surprise to you. Fathers, I've seen videos of fights and, and videos of, of almost warfare right in our streets as we've seen in the Middle East for years and years and years. Lord, it makes our hearts go, what is going on? But Lord, we know that you are on the throne. We know that you are still on the throne. We know that your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. We know, Lord, that you have brought us through many trials, many tribulations, many questions, many confusing times. And Lord, it seems like this year is one of the most confusing times this nation has gone through in a long, long time. So Father, I pray that the words that you share with us today will draw our hearts back to you, will settle our hearts in you, on your power, on your strength, on your faithfulness, on your plans, your desires, your will. Father, let not this year of confusing times be wasted by your people. I know, Lord, we know that all things work together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purposes. But, Lord, we can tend to get in your way and not work alongside you in the process. So, Lord, help us to work alongside you and not against you. With our words, with our actions, with our thoughts. Father, I pray, you, I know you have given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, not of fear. So Lord, wherever you find fear in the camp, root it out. And help us be as Gideon's army, the ones that were left after you separated all the others out. <laughs> and only those who trusted in you, completely were left. Father, if that's what must happen, help our hearts be steady and steadfast as we may see some of our brothers and sisters leaving in fear. Lord, let that not be said of us that we left in fear. But help us stay in step with you with your ways, with your Holy Spirit. 
for the sake and for the name of our Lord and our Savior who died on that cross for us, for our sins, to set us free and to deliver us. It's for His name and for His sake that we pray. Amen. Amen. So, in Psalm 37, this, <laughs> this psalm carries so many promises for God's people, for those who are humble, for those who are meek, just like Jesus preached in his first sermon, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Psalm 37 says, Blessed are the meek, so they shall inherit the whole world. <laughs> Some great promises. But in verse 23, this verse has always captured my heart, especially as a leader, as a shepherd, as one who is expected and enabled and entrusted to care for God's flock. Of sheep. It says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Jeremiah 10 23 is another one like this. Jeremiah 10. <clears throat> verse 23. Says, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. <laughs> it is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Or in other words, to direct his own steps. It's not in us <laughs> to direct our steps. Lord, I know, I know it is not in man. To direct his way and his steps. Another one, Proverbs 16, verse 9. <clears throat> A man's heart devises his way or plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. His steps. <laughs> his very steps. The title of this message today is What I Don't Know and What I Know. Since we closed, or since we announced closing the coffee house, which has been a huge part of this ministry for eight years. There have been a ton of questions. And I understand. I have questions in my own heart. Trust me. We have questions. And as so many questions have been coming in from so many people, I thought maybe it would be good to share this all at once. Um... And also, to help all of us, even the people, especially the people online, to understand what goes through the heart of a pastor, the heart of a shepherd, the heart of any leader, really, as they are trying to follow and seeking to follow the lead of the Lord Jesus. And... And so, I don't want anyone to hear any of this um, as any kind of frustration or any kind of, any other emotion other than just sharing. And also, equipping us all to follow the Lord better. Um, so, here are the things that I don't know. Here are the things that I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I simply don't. I don't know. 
What's in my own hope? I'm not any better than any of anybody. Just because God has chosen me as the particular shepherd of this particular flock, sometimes he gives me insight, but usually it is step by step. And a lot of times it is through many counselors. And, and the words come in a lot of times just when we need them. And just at the right time because... A picture that God put in my heart just last night or this morning. I don't know, remember which because last night blurs all together because it was so late and so early. But the picture in my mind was the picture of somebody playing chess. And all I saw was someone moving the chess piece one step, one move. And I felt like it was God's hand. <laughs> God's hand. Now, if you are an expert chess player. How do you play chess? You're always three or four or ten steps ahead of the moves that you're making. Right? And that's our God. That is our Lord and Savior. That is our Creator, God. He is the master of all masters of chess playing. And more than that, of planning out the steps of His beloved. We are his beloved. Not just me, not just you, but his whole bride is his beloved bride. And he asks his bride daily, do you trust me? Do you trust my love? Do you trust me enough to follow me even if I don't tell you where I am going? You know how much I feel like he said that to me? Huh. You know how many times? A lot of times. <laughs> A lot of times. It's like, Chris, I know I put you in that position to lead my people. So, the bigger question is, are you going to trust me to keep going and keep doing what I called you to do, even if you don't hear directly from me for a while? And I can't tell you how hard that's been on my wife and I. But praise the Lord. <laughs> he has kept us upright. <laughs> he has kept us taking that next step. He has, he has kept being that light unto our path and the lamp unto our feet. And, and a lot of days it feels like just... Good, that's a good idea. A lot of days it feels like just a lamp unto our feet. It's like, well, I can see right here there's a stone. So I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to take this step. I don't know what the next step is. But I'm going to take that step and trust the Lord for the next step. And the next step. And the next step. And the next step. And I've made mistakes. I have reacted to that in some negative ways. Because of the frustration in my heart. Because of Letting fears enter in. Like we all do at times. And I'm sorry if any of those reactions have hurt any of you. Especially my family. But I want you to know that my whole heart is to follow the Lord Jesus. Because I know He watches everything that I do. And I don't take his ministry lightly. I know that when I get to heaven, I'm going to give an account for how I followed him and led his people. And there have been days where I have wished <laughs> that I could just 
write down a plan and say, here's where we're going. Woo! Are you with me? <laughs> you know, I have wished that we could just write this all out and say, this is what I think we need to do. And I know there are other pastors who God has given them a great vision and they write it out. And that's exactly what God leads them to do. But in my experience, for me, and the way God's leading me in this ministry, it has mostly been, here's an idea. Lord, will you bless it? And God goes, that's not my idea. That's your idea. I want you to learn how to trust me and how to follow me, even if all you get is an inch of light. That's what he's been training us to do. And I'm not saying that if someone else can come up with a, a godly plan, that they're wrong. I'm just saying that this is how he has been leading me for years and years and years. I don't always like it. <laughs> Boy, would I love to just set a plan and go for it. Now, when he gives me some, some far away vision, then we can write down a plan for how we think we're going to get there. But how could Joseph get to where God told him he was going to be in that dream? How could Joseph have brought himself to the right hand of Pharaoh to save all of Egypt and all the surrounding land? Joseph could have never gotten him there, himself there with a plan. With a man's plan. How could Moses get himself and all the Israelites... To the promised land, if he had written, sat down and wrote out, this is how we're going to go. That's not how Moses followed the Lord. Moses followed the Lord day and night, following the cloud and following the pillar of fire. And that's all the, 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 the leading that he had, other than writing the law and, and knowing God's heart and writing down what God wanted for his people in obedience. What was it? Why did it take 40 years for them to get to the promised land? Who? Why? <laughs> and I'm not saying that any pastor today is Moses per se, but everyone listening at home and around the world. We all need to be careful that we don't fire arrows at our leaders when we are not getting where God said we need to go fast enough. It was the whole camp's lack of trust in God that forced God to say these people are not ready to go into the promised land yet. And sometimes, it is the same for a church. God may be saying, these people are not ready yet <laughs> for this X, Y, or Z. I need to train them first. And did God kick them to the curb? No. He trained up the generation that was going to go into the promised land. And there were a few in that earlier generation that got to go in. Because they trusted the Lord no matter what. They trusted, hey, yeah, there's giants in the land, but look at the fruit we can have. <laughs> the, the, the grapes are the size of melons. Uh, and we're going to take those giants, no problem, because God is our God. And, but Moses didn't know where God was going to lead him the next day. And Moses was leading thousands, thousands of people. So I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what I will be doing this week or next week. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to be doing this week or next week. Because I want to wait on the Lord daily. And I want to be so sensitive to Him that when He says this person needs to be visited, I can go 
When he says, this needs to be taken care of, I can take care of it. When he says, this, he, this person needs discipled, and this is what you're going to share with them, I can do that. I don't want to put God in any more of a box than that. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to be doing this week or next week. I don't know where. Man, I wish I knew. I don't know where or when. God is going to lead our church to next. I don't know where or when. Now, I don't know what the exact plan is. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next year or in 20 years. I don't know what is happening in America or what's going to happen next. I don't know. We don't know tomorrow. And as much as we want somebody to tell us What's going to happen tomorrow? God says, you don't know what tomorrow brings. Tomorrow is not even promised. It's not even promised. So boast not about tomorrow and what you're going to do. But let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Anything more than this is vanity. That's what Jesus says. Number two, what I feel like God is showing us. What I feel like God is showing us. And I, God is not silent. <laughs> I don't know the exact plan. But I feel like he has a unique and a big plan for us. And for his whole church at this time. I feel like God is shifting his whole church at this time. And I'm not the only one who feels this. I feel like God is taking us through a transition, not just as TriPoint Church, but His whole bride. He is wanting to take us all through a transition right now. And we have a choice to make. We have, we have, we have to decide. Do we want to go back to where we came from? Or do we want to get to where God wants us to go as a church? Do we want to go back to the comfort of church of yesteryear? Or do we want to move on into the more glorious being of the bride? The, the bride that the Lord is planning us to be and shaping us to be. There, I believe there are many in the worldwide church. Everybody that believes that Jesus is Lord. I believe there are many who just want to go back to the way things were. Another thing I feel is it's never going to happen. Not even in this land. Not even in this world. There have been those who at the beginning of the announcing of COVID, who have prophesied, they felt on the first day that they were saying we need to go into quarantine, they felt this is not going to happen quickly. This is not going to go away quickly. In fact, they were feeling like it was going to last at least a year up to a year and a half before things got sort of back to Normal, And at that time, I felt like, mm, we'll see. And here we are, how many months later? And as our state opened things back up, just look in this room. How hard has it been to get this church back to where we were before it started? There are pastors who are saying now, you know, you thought that closing your churches was hard. Try opening them back up. It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. The other thing you got to think about. If you believe we're standing in the last days, which next week's message is going to be all about. If you really believe that, you have to believe things are going to change drastically yeah. in our world. Yeah. And we have a choice to make. Are we going to... 
hope and wish that it would come back? Or are we going to be the believers of Revelation who stand up and, and, and we stand, even in the time of trial, no matter how bad it gets, and we stand for Christ and we stand for His promises, His truths, His sake, and stand for Jesus, no matter what we have to face, or not. Because Jesus warned us, these things were coming. And it's amazing it's amazing to me who, who I've been studying the Bible since before I could read. <laughs> I've been hearing the Bible since before. It's amazing to me now standing at 44 years of age and seeing these things that Jesus proclaimed in Matthew 24 that are going to start to happen. Seeing us walking through these things in our own lives. And so... Now, what are we going to do about it? <clears throat> so, but I feel like he has a unique and big plan for this church, specifically. His plan for TriPoint is big and mighty, and one that we would not even believe if he told us right now. That's what I'm feeling right now. That's what I'm feeling like the Lord is showing us, and not just me. <laughs> he has a big and amazing plan for us, for TriPoint, that we wouldn't even believe if he told us. And so hang in there. Hang in there. Those that endure to the end shall be delivered, Jesus says, to the churches. Those that endure to the end shall be delivered, Jesus says. No matter what tribulation we go through, that is true. And those letters are written to all churches of all time. It doesn't matter if we're in the end times or not. Those that endure to the end shall be delivered Jesus said number three what I know that I know and this is my last point let me go to Proverbs 20 24 Proverbs 20 24 this verse <laughs> puts everything into supreme focus that I can't explain away. I wouldn't want to, but those other verses kind of leave a little room for man's plans. But look at this one. Matthew 20, 20 or Proverbs 20, 24 says, Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? We can't even understand our own way. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. How, how much, I mean, Lord, Father, help us to see how much we try to lean on our own understanding. And we're fooling ourselves, thinking that we're not. The Bible is clear. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Man's ways are of the Lord. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? I couldn't have told you 20 years ago that I would have two young men in my life who are now graduated. Who are now both going to camp. I couldn't have told you 15 years ago. When I first took them and my wife to camp for a week. And it was a rough week on all of us. I couldn't have told you that they would come to love this camp. In future years. Especially when we moved to Omaha. Farther than this camp. I couldn't have told you those things. I couldn't have told you that we would. I, could, I couldn't have told you I'd be in the ministry. Point blank. I did not want to be in the ministry. If I had my way, I would have not been in the ministry. <laughs> until God changed my heart. I couldn't have told you I'd be running a coffee house. I, could, I couldn't have told you these things. Man's ways are not of the Lord. Or are of the Lord. And, and I can't understand them. Even looking back, I have a hard time understanding it all. 
By the way, all four teens are going to camp this week, so we need to pray for them. Um, keep them in your heart and in your prayers this week. But here's what I know that I know. God said if we are faithful to trust and obey and follow Him, He will lead us all the way and every day. Our job is to stay trusting and faithful and obedient. I know that's what God wants. I know that He blesses that. I know that He will keep leading us if that's what we do. If we trust Him. Lord, the way seems dark. It's cloudy. I can't see. But I know You're there. I can hear Your voice. And I, I can see at least one step ahead of me. So I'm going to trust You that You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna lead all these thousands and thousands of steps in the next thousands of days. We trust and follow and obey Him. He will lead us. I know that I know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through Him. I didn't used to know that. For sure. But God, Jesus brought me to a point where I know that I know that I know He is the only way. And that settles my heart for everything. When, when things get out of whack, when things get nervous, when whatever's going on on TV is crazy, whatever's going on in my front yard is crazy, when there's a hooligan hiding behind my shed and the cops are looking for him and he hops over my fence, when things get that crazy and there's something in his hand, the thing that always brings me back is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I am saved because of what He did on the cross. And one day I'm going to see Him face to face and I'm going to be with Him forever and ever and ever and ever. And all of this fades into the darkness. It doesn't mean it's all worthless. But all oh, those fears just whoo, <laughs> disappear. I know that I know Jesus is alive and on the throne. He has showed me that so many times. He showed me that when, when I didn't know what was going to happen. Eight years ago, just a little over eight years ago, I didn't know. When the city said, who told you you can have a church in that building? I didn't know what God was going to do next. I had no idea. In fact, I sat here and I was teaching a, a private lesson that day after I got that phone call from the city. Who told you you could have a church there? And we had already drawn up blueprints, which are not cheap. I was sitting here with my little student. She was a little, at the time, I think she was about 11 years old. And because I didn't know what God had planned for the next eight years, all I could do was sit there and say, play me your music. I didn't even give her a lesson that day. I let her play for me. And I just sat there and wept. Because I didn't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. I... I could not see the next step in front of me even. I was like. You know I felt like a failure. I felt like I would just blown it. For the whole church. I felt like I had blown it for God. All those feelings. I, I was sitting there. Scared to death. What I was going to go home and tell my wife. Here we are. Look at those eight years of ministry that God has done. Look at these wonderful kids that God's raised up because of all of us working together in this ministry. Look what God has done in your heart in these eight years, in my heart. Look how God has, has, has brought us to a new level. <laughs> I mean, I remember the day when somebody told me, man, your preaching has changed and gotten way better. That happened in this building. I don't know how or why other than God. But 
At that moment, I heard that phone call. I was sitting here crying when this little girl was playing her music, which was beautiful, by the way. It was amazing. I didn't know what was coming next. But God was still on his throne. And within five hours, just five hours, God's plan came in front of me. And even when it did, I thought it was nuts. <laughs> just like oh, everybody else did. <laughs> I was like, um, this can't be you, Lord. <laughs> so I called, <clears throat> I called the pastor that mentored me, and I, I, I just knew. I just knew that he was going to talk me out of it. Called him, I said, um, here's the deal. Here's what happened. And... Here's an idea. What do you think? He said, It sounds like God has hoed the rows of the field for you, and all you got to do is start planting this idea. He said, I think this is a great idea. I was like, <laughs> No! <laughs> this isn't the idea I want. <laughs> he goes, Churches need to do something different these days to reach people, and this is different. And I love it. I was like, okay. <laughs> then I called Ryan and Jesse because I knew they had a coffee house on their heart. And, and, and Ryan loved his job, as far as I knew. He loved the money he was making. He, he loved the environment. I called him, I thought, nah, he's not going to go for this. <laughs> Again, instantly, he almost jumped through the phone. <laughs> he said, I will put my two weeks in notice right now and come help on this project. I was like, what? <laughs> so then I called the city. I was like, okay, here's the idea. What do you think of this? And the guy in the city said, we love that idea. We would promote that idea. We would not only allow it, but we would promote you guys to do that. I was like, okay. And, God, and Heather felt in her heart it was, it was God speaking. I couldn't deny it. I, I mean, every turn, I expected it to go different than this. And here we stand now, in almost the same place. Air conditioning's broken. <laughs> For how long? I keep asking God, what do you want me to do? I ask counsel, what do you want me to do? What, what should we do? What are you hearing from the Lord? And, but I feel that God's just getting ready and, and he's getting something ready that when it breaks forth, we're going to go. Just like all those phone calls before. And we're going to be amazed because God is still on his throne. And this is about Jesus' name being broadcast, not TriPoint, not Chris. Not anybody else. It's all about Jesus. And I know that I know that I know that he wants us to be evangelists to the world. He wants us to disciple those people. He wants us to even disciple churches in bringing other churches along in what he's been training us. Um, I know that I know that Jesus knows where he's going. I know that I know that Jesus knows tomorrow. He knows next week. He knows next month. He knows next year. He knows the thousand years. I know that I know that the Heavenly Father even knows the day and the hour when Jesus will come back and finally straighten out this world. I know that he is my Savior, my Lord, my Shepherd, my Good Father, my Boss. And until he says, take a step, I'm not taking another step. Because I know that I know that I know that he's good and he's good to me. So I don't know 
what tomorrow's going to bring, and I don't know what to do next. But I know Jesus does, and I know he has a good and incredible plan. So hang in there. And even with this nation, even with this nation, God is on the throne. God is still on the throne. And I, I invite you to tune in next Sunday as well and hear that message. I feel like it's going to be a really important message for people beyond the, these walls <clears throat> and us. Father, I thank you for <laughs> I thank you for your excitement. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your promises, Lord. I thank you for your wisdom. And Lord, I ask even now Lord, we ask. We ask for your wisdom. Lord, please simply give us your wisdom. For how to follow you with this ministry, with our lives, with our families. Father, just bestow on us your wisdom as you promised to give wisdom to all those who ask. And I thank you that, that you do. And I thank you that your wisdom comes just in time. And at the right time. Father, if there is anything that we are doing that is holding you back, first forgive us. Lord, forgive us. Even, Lord, if there's something I'm doing that holds you back, forgive me. And I thank you for your forgiveness. Reveal to us what it is and help us to get it out. Just like Achan's sin that he buried under his tent. Help us to dig it out and get it out of the camp. So that like Joshua and the Israelites, we can take the land for the gospel of Jesus Christ. To draw all men's focus, all people's focus to the Lord Jesus Christ. His crucifixion, death, and resurrection so they may be saved. For you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lord, let that be the one focus of our hearts. We we'll praise you and thank you. We thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to continue to do in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. I'm going to just let you get up, say hi to each other. <laughs> Someone's calling me over.